Hello guys, in this video we will see how to create MS SQL Server instance in AWS and we will see how to connect AWS RTS using SQL Server Management Studio. Click on services then search for RDS. Click on this RDS service. See at present I don't have any RDS instances. See db instances are 0. Click on create database. Here we have two database creation methods standard create and easy create. It is better to go with standard create. These are the list of the engine options. Aurora, MySQL Server, MariaDB, PostgreSQL, Oracle and MS SQL Server. Click on this radio button to select Microsoft SQL Server. See here, you can deploy multiple editions of only 2012, 14, 16 and 2017, including Express Web Standard and Enterprise editions. Also notice here, AWS RDS and AWS RDS Custom. See, these are the editions. In this video, I am going with SQL Standard Edition. In your case, Select based on your requirement. Here, here they mentioned up to 2017, but we have the latest version up to 2019 as well. I am going with the latest one. Templates, production, or dev test. Based here also, based on your requirement, select. I am going with dev and test. Here we have to provide the name for instance. I am giving name as first DB. Master username. This is the username that we are going to connect using SSMS. That is SQL Server Management Studio. I am not changing it. If you want, you can change. Like administrator. Anything. But I am keeping as it is. Master password. Master password means password for this user. DB instance class, I am going with the list one that is DB, DB M5 large. Storage type, general purpose SSD. Allocated storage, you can give up to 16,384 gigabytes. I am going with 20 gigabytes. This is the maximum storage threshold. If you want to deploy in multi availability zone, you have to select this S. Otherwise, no. Compute resource, don't connect to, okay, I'm going with default one. Virtual private cloud, default one. If you want to separate VPC, click on new VPC, then DB subnet group, public access, S, and remaining like VPC security group, availability zone, I'm going with defaults. Additional configurations, this is the database port. If you want to enable SQL Server Windows Authentication, you have to select the checkbox. This is the performance insights. I am not going to change anything. No additional configurations. I am not going to change anything. Keep all as it is. You can create database. So, password is on. We have to give Until now, I tried to give at the rate sign in my password, but now I replace. Now, we are okay for these settings, then click on create database. Suggested add-ons for post -TV. Select any one of them if required, but at present I am not going for anything. Click on close. Instance name is this one. So status is creating. This is the size. And this is the VPC information. Click on instance name. If you want to see the credentials, you have to click on this view credentials details. Wait until here that endpoint will be displayed. See, the status is still creating. I am going back to RDS. See, here we have one instance. Before it was showing 0 by 40.
Now see instance is available. Click on the instance name. See this is the endpoint. See publicly accessible. This is the VPC information. These are the subnets. Now we are going to connect this instance from SQL Server Management Studio. Search for SQL Server Management Studio. If you don't have SQL Server Management Studio, you can download and install it. It is free of cost. No need to pay. Here we have to provide endpoint. Then we have to give the login name that is admin. Then provide the password that we have given. Click on connect. This will be failed. Why? I will show you. Click on connect. See the network path was not found. So click on OK. Then go to database. Then click on this, sec this VPC security group. Then click on inbound rules. Scroll down. Edit inbound rules. Click on add rule. Custom. Then we have to give 1433. This is the port for MSSQL. Here IP, my IP, then click on save rules. It is successful. Now go to SQL Server Management Studio and click on continue. This time we will not receive error. See, it is success. Expand databases. See, these are all inbuilt databases. Now we can create databases by right clicking on database and select new database. I'm giving database name as R2 schools. Then click on OK. We can discuss these parameters later. Click on OK. See new database has been added. In the same way we can create the logins. Right click and select new login. Then provide the name. R2 admin. Provide the password. Click on OK. Now disconnect. Connect again. Here change name r2 admin provide the password click on connect we have to reset the password click on ok see we have successfully connected with the user r2 admin see here the ok so if you want to modify anything, you have to select the checkbox, then click on modify. Otherwise, if you want to stop temporarily, you have to click on. If you want to reboot, you have to click on this reboot button. If you want to take snapshot of this machine, we have to click on this one. If you want to restore to point in time, you have to click on this one. If you are not using, it is always recommended to stop the machine. So, in this video, we have seen how to create MS SQL Server instance and how to connect MS SQL Server instance using SQL Server Management Studio that is SSMS in AWS RDS environment. For more AWS and cloud videos, cloud videos, please subscribe my channel. Thank you.